What's up everybody? This is the steering wheel that came in my 1962 Catalina. This is how a lot of these 50s and 60s wheels end up looking, but don't fret. If the steering wheel in your old hot rod looks just as bad, don't panic. I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this for less than $100. You can too. I'm even gonna give you a secret weapon at the end that I think should make the repaired wheel live a long life. Stick around to the end and I'll show you how I did it. Before we get started here, I wanna give you a little bit of a disclaimer. I don't really mean for this to be a tutorial. We're gonna make this really short. This is gonna be a lot more of a roadmap than anything else. I just wanna show you how, for kind of minimal effort, you can make your wheel a lot better if you've got one as bad as I did here. Now, for this, if you wanted your factory wheel repaired and it was this bad, you're probably gonna to have to send it out because the only other option is for you to make some molds at home yourself. It's possible, but it's, it's not reasonable for most of us to do so. So what I did is I scoured eBay and Facebook Marketplace and all that stuff until I just found a good deal on a similar wheel. Now, the one that I put in is not identical to this, but most GM wheels of the era, they all kind of affix the same. They're mostly around the same diameter. So the one that I bought was advertised as a 62 Pontiac. Maybe it's a 62 Tempest, I don't know. It was really close. The trim ring from this wheel still fit on it. and. You know, if you're not a dead nuts purist for 62 Pontiacs, you wouldn't know the difference. If you wanted to get your wheel restored, those are out there. I'll put a link in the description. Those services can be had. They are really expensive. And I'm not hating, because I'm glad that they're there, because we just talked about how hard it would be to mold this wheel again. But for a lot of us who just kind of have down and dirty hot rods, we want there to be a real steering wheel there, but you might not want to spend the better part of $1,000. When you're looking for a wheel, aside from it fitting your car, the big thing that you wanna make sure is that it's complete. It can be cracked, that's fine. The one that I got was cracked, and I'm gonna show you how I addressed that, but it can't be missing any big sections like this, because again, that's where a molding would come in. So, let's get started. I'm recycling some old footage here, so I apologize for some of it being in the wrong aspect ratio, and I think I can do about that now. So let's jump into this, and I'll show you what I did. So here's the wheel as I got it. We're gonna zoom in, do a little bit of a roundabout and show you all the little imperfections in it. Again, the big thing here to note is that while it's cracked and old, the wheel is complete. So here's your first step. You're going to take any cracks that you have and use a Dremel to V-notch those cracks and open them up to give your two-part epoxy more surface area to flow into and hold. Now this is also an area where you should take more time than I did. I was a little lazy with this part and some of the little tiny cracks I just filled in with super glue. I don't know how effective that's going to be long term, so I recommend you stick to the process and V-notch all the cracks big and small. Pretty obvious next step here, mix your two-part epoxy and use it to fill in any of the cracks. After your epoxy cures, you're going to sand it down. Here's my first pass after we sanded it, she already looks way better than it did. If you look really closely, you can see some of those little micro cracks that I talked about where I got lazy and didn't open them up and refill them. I do recommend you work a little bit harder than I did there kind of jump into the finish here because I'm not going to bore you with four stages of coatings but we used an adhesion promoter first then primer then our color coat and then our secret weapon clear coat Let's stick around for just a few more seconds and I'll give you a breakdown of all the products we used on this you can also tell that I didn't go out of my way to make the wheel perfect here you can be as meticulous as you feel like you need to be products that I used PC7 two-part epoxy. When I did a little bit of research on Google, this is kind of what I came up with. There were some alternate theories, but this is sort of the most common one that I got, so that's what I went with. It was really easy to work with. It's a straight 50-50 mix. Next up, adhesion promoter. Anytime you're painting on plastic or polymer, whatever you want to call that steering wheel material, this is a good idea. Then I used a normal common sandable primer out of a rattle, rattle can, and then I put paint over that. In my case, I used a body color paint, spray paint. 
This is just a pearl white that I picked up at AutoZone. This is actually a Toyota color, but I wanted a white that had a little bit of, a little bit of extra something to it, so I picked up this pearl. Now, I mentioned I was gonna give you a secret weapon, and I'll let you in on a double secret. This is kind of my secret weapon for pretty much every paint project. 2K Urethane Clear Coat. It's two part, you do need a gun for this if you're gonna buy it in bulk, but they do make it in spray cans. It's just a two parter, you push a button on the bottom. The downside to that is, you pretty much need to use the whole can, I think within 24 hours, because it goes bad after that. What I do, is I keep a gallon of this stuff around. If I paint an engine, 2K clear coat. If I paint anything that I want to stay shiny and stay shiny for a long time, I put this stuff on it. It's really hard, really durable, and it shines like crazy. So after I got done painting my wheel the color I wanted it, I put this stuff on it, and it should keep the shine lasting for a long time. That's it for this one. I just wanted to give you a little quick and dirty on how I made my wheel much more palatable than it was when I got the car. We'll see you next time.